him. We'll start with that one anyway in the third chapter of John. <clears throat> I think Steve was asking my wife something about, does Randy have a problem because he's always <clears throat> coughing and stuff? But if you'll notice, I only do that like about the first five minutes, and then everything clears up. And it goes, goes all the way back to the first recording ever of me. It's like, I'm kind of like this fine-tuned engine car that hadn't been driven for a while, and you have to blow the carbon out of the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, it's it's nice. It's it's cool in here. You ought to you ought to try living in my house. <laughs> this feels pretty good. <clears throat> All right. Um, last class, we uh, we were going over this thing about <clears throat> um, the death of sons, and that's why I wrote this on here. <clears throat> sons representing the sons of God, or if I talk about a son, usually that is, or the son, it is representing Christ in his person. But last class, <clears throat> we went through a whole bunch of scriptures, and we went and we looked through those scriptures, <clears throat> and the one we started with was right here in verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And we discovered more than our salvation in that. We discovered that the son, for, that he gave his only begotten son. What we discovered is <clears throat> that the son is self-giving or that uh, we're, we're, we've been comparing this to the death of stars are suns, stars are suns, and um, <clears throat> that, that the very nature of the son <clears throat> is to give himself. And I think John 3.16 says it just as good as, as any scripture that you could find. But, um, <clears throat> but when you start applying astrophysics to the realities that are in Christ. Notice I didn't say comparing it to Christianity because that's a whole other ballgame. You start applying astrophysics or any science to Christianity, there's an immediate uproar and fighting goes on. <clears throat> I said comparing that to the reality as it is in Christ, you begin to see that um, as in astrophysics, the most powerful thing in the universe is the dying of a sun. And in the reality in Christ, the most powerful thing in the spiritual realm is the dying, first of all, of the sun, and then of other sons. In last class, we went through a bunch of scriptures and showed how God wanted to conform us to the image of the Son. And not just to the image of Christ, the Messiah, but to the image of the Son, His Son. And we went through the scriptures and we showed how God the Father wanted sons in the image of Christ. He didn't want planets, you know. He didn't want Christians. He wanted sons that would be in the image of Christ. And to be in the image of Christ, we found out what it means to be conformed to the image of his son. Well, that's different than conforming to the image of the Christ's religion that he came to bring. In my understanding, it's the same thing, but <clears throat> he didn't come to bring us religion. He came to give us life. <clears throat> and so... Um, and so this reality applies to Christ. The most powerful, most effective thing that ever happened in the spiritual realm was the death of the Son. But if you'll notice, if you've done any studying at all, there are, 
there's not just one son that, that went supernova. There are many sons that do that, and in Christ there are many sons, <clears throat> and there is this ongoing death. And, and to show you that, John 3.16 is a perfect example of the son and his death. But turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and we'll see this ongoing work that goes on. <clears throat> because um, all that we are talking about <clears throat> When we talk about the death of the Son, we're either talking about Christ in his initial dying on Calvary, or we're talking about his dying within us, his selfless, self-giving life within us that is at work. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 4 bears this out in verse uh, 10. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. And so, <clears throat> if this scripture is true, then, and if this, the things, the scriptures we covered in the last class are true, then there are Christians who are becoming sons in the image of Christ. Remember the, the verse that we quoted over in John 1? To as many as received him. How many of you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? All right. To you is given the authority to become something. I'm already something. I'm saved. I'm, I'm a child. To you, the saved ones, the one who have received him is given the authority, the power to become the sons of God. All right. Well, the way that makes it sound to me is that that's not automatic. You're not automatically a son in the sense of, of being, in the, in the sense of how you carry yourself. You may be a son in principle because if you're born again, you're in the family. But guess what? The scriptures make a distinction between being a child and a son. The scriptures make a distinction between that. Uh, Galatians 4 is your, your best example you'll find of that. Galatians 4.1, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Well, he's not functioning in sonship because he's still... A child. Now, when you say a child, he's not talking about how many years old you are in Jesus. Well, I'm, I'm four and a half years old. No, he's not talking about that kind of deal. He's talking about your level of maturity. And that's part of what we want to deal with here. <clears throat> because in physics, there are many different kinds of sons and many different kinds of deaths and manifestations of deaths, of sons. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, there, well, there's neutron stars and magnetars and pulsars and so many different manifestations of that death. And, and uh, we talked about that a little bit, that the different names for these different deaths and the manifestation of it, they are simply named to show the differences because there are differences in the death. The difference is how much that son dies and how big is he a son? Because the bigger the son the more powerful the death, the more powerful the results. Well, does that make sense spiritually to anybody? Yeah. That the degree of death determines the degree of resurrection. Yes. No. We probably won't get into black holes in this class, this one today, or 
this first one. We might in the second. It really depends on how far I go. But when we get to black holes specifically, and here's why. Because a black hole is a sun, <clears throat> for now we'll just say it simply, is a sun that went supernova, but it was a massive sun. Like Jesus. A massive sun. And the results, and I will say this, you know, we are jumping a little bit, but we the most powerful realities of a, the death of a sun is manifested by a black hole. Okay. That's, that's important for you to understand. <clears throat> All right. So, um, so if you're talking about neutron stars in, in the form of magnetars or pulsars or any of the other... Um, R's, <laughs> any of the other things, man, the, the names that they put on the different manifestations, <clears throat> uh, they all represent the Son, Jesus Christ, either in his death or they represent Jesus in us and his dying in us, which makes us sons. Okay, you following this? All right, so, yes. Absolutely. So do we, yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, what about, how, how is it stored? Are we sons in the fullness of being brothers to God through the Lord? And, and, you know, like your sons grow up to be like you? And, I mean, how, how does that fullness, you know, grow up in the fullness of the son of the fullness of Christ and grow up in the fullness? Wait a minute. Yeah, let me get the. Okay, time out. We're jumping a little bit because I will cover that. But we're not going to cover it right here. But but um, probably when we deal with black holes, I will deal with that. And so. It is a good question. Yeah. It's, uh, in fact, I need to make sure I, right now, to you, it's like a black hole, but. Uh, uh, amen. All right. So this, this reality, and we did cover some of this in the last class, and that is that to, uh, to become a son is literally to become conformed to the image of the son. It's not that we become divine, because we're not divine. I've, I've seen most of you, you know. I know how you function, and we're not divine. But we have the life of Christ, and to whatever degree he is formed in us, that is the... Um, magnitude of sonship because it is the son for example the scriptures say you know john wrote this in first john he says um you know we write these things unto you that we might you might have fellowship with us and then he goes but truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son in other words there is no fellowship outside of the son fellowship and with his father and we're brought into that relationship and so we learn to relate as sons by Christ, and that's important. You may, you may think, say, I don't make that big of a deal out of terminology most of the time, but that's one of the things I make a big deal out of because if you leave that we are being made sons of God by Christ, if you leave by Christ out of that, then we think we're becoming something, and that is wrong. We think we're becoming spiritual. That's wrong. We're becoming in the image of Christ, who is spirit and life. And it is a conformity as sons by Christ. Because even Galatians 4, he says, God has sent forth the spirit of his son, not, not the Holy Spirit, not the, the 
um, the spirit of divinity, the spirit of his son into your heart crying, Abba, Father. Well, we're doing it, but we're not doing it. It's coming from our heart, but it's not us. It's the son. But we have been made one with the son. And in being made one, then that same spirit will work in us. That same life, that same attitude. Let this mind be in you. And the truth, the truth there is it's let this attitude, let this attitude be in you. And what does it describe? A son. How do you know it's describing a son? Because it immediately starts describing this selfless. He made himself of no reputation. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And it says, let that mind be in you. Okay? So, you know, that's, that's the word of God. That's God's plan. That's him being formed in us. You know, people say, oh, I want Jesus formed in me so I can do powerful miracles. and be." That's not... That is, you, you know what? You can be given gifts of healing and miracles and all kind of stuff and be nothing like Jesus. Right. And let me say it more specifically. And be nothing like the Son. Okay? And anybody that's been in any sort of Pentecostal, spirit-filled, charismatic churches knows what I'm talking about. If you've been any length of time... I have seen some of the most ranked people stand up and deliver a word from the Lord or pray for somebody, and God would heal somebody, and I'd just go, what is, I mean, in this my early days, what is up with that? I know this person's life there. It stinks to high heaven. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. They're gifts. They're not rewards. They didn't earn them. It's just a gift. You know, but let me tell you, it's more than a gift when you can hang on that cross with Jesus and people say, if you are the son of God, come down from the cross and you won't come down because why? You are a son of God. See, if you are the son of God, see, they don't even understand what a son is. So they'd never say, if you're the son of God, you'd come down. Because if you're a son of God, you'll stay up. <laughs> a son of God by Christ. <clears throat> okay, so that brings us to what we're talking about. And that is, you know, we think, you know, I, I was talking with somebody recently. We, you know, I thought, okay, what I'm going to do, I want to change the world. I want people to know Jesus. I want people to actually have the living, real God. So I said, okay, what can I do to further the kingdom of God? I was in my early 20s, I, you know, so the first thing I did was I ran around, you know, ran out into the world, you know, long-haired Jesus freak, and I preached Christ to everybody and, you know, just chased so many off. I mean, I, I was so zealous that it was, like, sickening, you know. I mean, it really was, and, and uh it took years to, to get my family to even listen to me after that because I was so full of myself thinking I was full of Jesus in my delivery and everything. And so, um, so then God, you know, it's almost like my father sat me down and he said, look, you know, um, you need to learn me for a while. You need to, you know, that zeal is good, folks. And I love zeal. I do. I'm sorry. I'm still one that loves zeal. But I tell you what, I've seen zeal at work by itself, and it just doesn't hack it. Okay? So he sat me down. He said, you need to, know, you need to learn me. Okay, well, I'm going to do that. So then I began to learn. And then from the results of some of that learning, you go, oh, man, I am going to teach people Christ. So I, I you know, I taught um, was a missionary and taught and did all this stuff and I am going to bring Jesus to people and I preach and I preach the truth because I thought that preaching the truth would bring somebody to the image of Christ and it won't okay so then I said man this doesn't seem to be as effective um, 
maybe if I start writing books, they can stop, you know, because when you're preaching, you can't stop. It just, it's like a snowball. It just keeps coming. You go, oh, that was really good. Cool. Oh, it's past now, and you're, you're in things in your face again with something else. You, you know what I'm saying? So I said, okay. That doesn't seem to be as effective. I'm going to start writing books. So, you know, I don't know how many books I've written, but it's probably well over 100. And, you know, I'm going to write these books, and, you know, I'm going to put it all down, and it's going to be so clear. And they can stop, and they can back up, and they can meditate on just this one sentence for three months if they want to, and they're going to get it, you know. So, you know, you put it out there, and, well, I mean, you, you know, hardly see a ripple, you know. And... Um, so on and on and on. And then I realized, and, and what's funny is what I'm about to tell you that I realized I had been preaching for many, many years by then. I realized this crazy little phrase that says, life comes out of death. <laughs> and I, I knew the phrase. I even believed it. I just didn't believe it for me. Or maybe I did believe it for me, but I, I don't know. I don't know where the disconnect came from. But all of a sudden I realized there's not going to be any life. There might be learners. There might be people who can, there might be parrots. <laughs> you know, go into all the world and preach and make parrots. Robots. No, 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 no. I mean, a lot of people might like that. Oh, they're parroting me. You know, what is it? Copying is the greatest form of flattery or something. So they're copying, they're saying what I, I say. That might be good for some preachers, but for me it's like, <laughs> oh, God, please, no, you know. I, 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 you know, because why? Because I want to conform to the image of Christ. Why would I want anybody to conform to what I'm trying to get rid of? It doesn't even make sense. I mean, you just, it doesn't even take a genius to figure that out. You just go, da, 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 da. you know, it's kind of like E equals MC squared, you know, proves all of relativity, you know, and you go, that's just so simple. But I realize that life comes out of death, and if, if my ministry, not my preaching, my ministry is going to have any true eternal value it's going to have to really be jam-packed full of death. That's what we're talking about here in physics, in astrophysics. We're talking about the death of suns, and that's what populates the universe with all of the materials that make up the universe. Not any other thing, one thing, the death of suns. When they die, that's when all of this begins, and that's when the process begins to happen. And so, um, you know, you see that there is, a, there is a different degree. Look, speaking of all that, let's just back it up with some scriptures. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11. <clears throat> and <clears throat> what I am going to show you after we read this scripture is I'm going to show you that thing about the degree, the degree of death, and the size of the sun. That these two factors right here, the degree of death, size of the sun, these two factors will prove out your ministry. They will determine how much life ultimately comes. You can live a lifetime. You can preach. You can preach the right stuff. I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. You can preach the right stuff. You can teach. You can write books. You can do all this stuff. And, you know, and people can follow you. Let me tell you, again, 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 Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. 
Our goal isn't to lift him up so people will be drawn to me. And so I, this, this needs to register. If it, if it hasn't, it needs to. The degree of death and the size of the sun makes the total difference in a supernova or not supernova or spiritually speaking, the degree that Christ is in your ministry. I'm not talking about gifts, again. I'm not talking about anointing. Anointing has been lifted up and lifted up and lifted up and, and I have no I have absolutely no problem with anointing. I think that I have some anointing when I really want to. Sometimes I don't want to. Sometimes I just want people to hear the truth and be affected without it being anointing. Does anybody even understand that? I got two hands. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And that's the that's the order. And of course you're talking about seeds, but but we're talking we're just using a different example here. We're using astrophysics. Yeah, Scott? Sure he was. Right. Right. Well, God even anointed him as king. God did. God anointed him as king. Well, folks, God's anointed a lot of people that that are just as bad as Saul. You know. It took me. It took me years or a year to figure out that anointing and gifts and power and all of that wasn't where it was at, though I believe in it and I think it's beneficial, particularly used in the right way. I'm not against it at all. I, in fact, I appreciate it. But if it replaces the reality of Christ, then it's dangerous. That's all I can say. And you have to figure that out on your own. Just because I say it don't mean you're supposed to believe it. Because I don't know everything. Okay? So I'm just telling you that. But I am telling you that this right here is true in physics. The degree of death that that sun dies and the matter size of it, the size of it, will determine whether it goes supernova or just dies. All right? Well, I'll explain that in just a second. All right, we, I ask you to turn to, what did I say, Hebrews 11? Hebrews chapter 1. No, I, I thought I said 11. Um, let's look at verse uh, 32. <clears throat> All right, you, you're, you're going to hear this and you're going to go, well, that disproves everything you just said. Brother Randy, what is wrong with you? Don't you read the scriptures you tell us to? Yeah, let's read. Verse 32 and what shall, I, what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and David and also Sam, and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of, weak, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others, um, and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourging, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, they were tested, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. All right, let's just stop right there. <clears throat> All right, so Hebrews 11 is known as the Hall of Faith. Not the Hall of Fame, but the Hall of Faith. You know, it's the faith chapter. <clears throat> and what you see here is you see deliverances and power and miracles, right? <clears throat> That's what it says. Time would fail me to tell, tell of all these people, you know, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, and obtained power, 
quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword. Okay, there's all of these great and wonderful things happening. I want to tell you that the first set of things that it's mentioning here are smaller suns. And I'll show it to you. They are not massive suns. They're not massively conformed to the image of Christ. They have conformed in some ways. They have conformed in some ways, but they have not conformed overall. They hold back and they keep this and no, not that. And I want my way and I want this and that, but I, but I want the Lord's way, you know, when it's going to suit me or whatever, you know. I'm telling you, the, the degree of death for them is smaller than for these other sons. Okay, now let's, let's just see it in these scriptures before we show it in uh, astrophysics. Um, it talks about all these wonderful victories and power and light coming forth. In verse 35, um, women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. What does that mean? That is a powerful reality that is saying, I don't want power. I don't want God's power. I don't want a miracle. I don't want deliverance. Is that not saying that? It's saying rejecting deliverance. Rejecting the very thing that the ones he just mentioned before got. But why? Why? Look at the scripture. Study the scripture. Get the sense from God of what he's saying there, and you'll discover that the reason why is they want a better resurrection. Well, the degree of death determines the degree of resurrection. You know, if your finger dies, maybe there'll be a finger-sized resurrection. You know what I'm saying? If you die, you know, my finger died for Jesus. I gave up my finger for Jesus, you know. And I live in the resurrection while I did at least for two weeks, <laughs> you know. And then you have Jesus, you have Joseph, you have Paul, you have massive sons. But they gave up their whole life, their existence, their hopes, their dreams, everything. And look at the, look at the shock wave just from the Apostle Paul. We're still reading this stuff. It's still impacting us. You know, why? Because he said, he's the one who quoted Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, Christ lives within me. And that word I am crucified is really not I am. Am, it's I was crucified in past tense with it having a present impact. In other words, I died with Christ 2,000 years ago and it's still, the cross is still impacting my life right now. He didn't say the resurrection. He said, I am raised with Christ. Nevertheless, I'm raised. Yet not I. I don't know, I'm confused, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm saying, but it'll sound spiritual in the Bible, you know. Well, he didn't write that. He didn't say that. He knew what he was saying. He was speaking of the cross because, as I've said before, there is absolutely no reason for hoping for resurrection life, resurrection power, resurrection reality with, with no... Yes, yeah, Steve? Is it the death, the death of Christ when he was at God? Is the taking of death, is that the taking away the, the autonomy? The, 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 the taking, if there's, the, if there's a reversal, the, 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 he's going to take away the body, the man and the body goes to the death, or he says, he states, he's going to return to his true plan, and not take the disease by the Antichrist plan. And that's what I'm saying. Right. All right, so the main thing I want you to see from that verse is, and, and from those, 
because if you read the rest of it, it's talking about trials of cruel scourging, the horrible, terrible treatment for God's people on this earth in the name of not accepting deliverance, not accepting power, but wanting to go deeper into death so that they'll have a better resurrection. Am I right or wrong? Is that not the meaning of that? All right. This last category are massive sons. They're conformed to the image of Christ. They understand that their purpose, you know, and that's okay for, it's okay for a magnetar to be a magnetar. It's okay for a pulsar to be a pulsar. It's okay. But it's not okay with them about themselves. Do you understand what I mean? For them, it's okay that you be that. But for them, it's not okay that I be that. I must go deeper into death so that Christ will get more glory. And by the way, the resurrection is Christ. He said, I am the resurrection. It's not us. Well, I died a whole bunch so that I could really come forth. Well, <laughs> I don't know how to say this, but that ain't going to happen, okay? <laughs> you know, uh, clearly you didn't die at all, if that's the thought that's going on <laughs> in your mind, all right? But I will tell you, in my early days, that's kind of how I read it. You know, it took the Holy Spirit to really lay it on me, you know, because people, People probably said it right all along. I probably didn't get that. I was probably going, yeah, okay, I'm going to die a big death so that I'll be somebody. You know. And they probably never said anything like that. But you know our carnal mind, oh, yeah, glory to God, this is going to be good. No, it's not. It's going to be God. <clears throat> all right, so... Um, our son, that we think is so massive, so central, if it died, it, it, it would never go supernova. In fact, there, there's a, a TV show, I think, coming up one of the nights called Supernova. And it's about our son going supernova and everybody trying to escape that. Our son can't go supernova. It's not big enough. You see, our little solar system isn't all there is. <laughs> it's not. It's our little realm, and we got nine planets. Oops, eight. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Pluto, you're out. <clears throat> you know, thank God Mickey Mouse didn't say that. Yeah, I got two people that got that. Thank you. <coughs> that was Mickey Mouse's dog's name. <coughs> you said I did get it. It wasn't funny. That's why I didn't respond. <coughs> um, I, you know, I won't go into the whole thing, but our son would just, it would eventually end up a red dwarf and would be very small, but it would be red and shiny and whatever. Um, <coughs> but when you start getting into... Uh, real sons and I you know I don't mean that they're not real I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to show you that we all should maybe we all don't we all should be pursuing to be greater and great greater formed and conform to the image of the son that Christ that that what did John the Baptist say he must increase and I must decrease that there would be, uh, you know, one of the phrases we say, more of Jesus, less of me. Yes, did you have your hand up? Amen. All right, so basically a, 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 a big, massive... Uh, son that would go supernova <clears throat> would in most cases form what's called a neutron star 
Now, there are actually different kinds of neutron stars because that's what a magnetar is. It's a, it's a neutron star and, and a pulsar and many others. I don't want to go into all of that as much as I want to show that there are actual differences of suns in their death. The degree of death determines what these suns, just in, in astrophysics, what they do how they manifest after death, okay? And some of them release incredible power, like a, a magnetar will just, there's just this electromagnetic field that's just going out from it, and it's just powerful, powerful, uh, you know, unheard of amount of power in that thing. Well, is that not unlike? Some sons who that's their goal. They just want to have some power. They just want to, you know, that sort of thing. And then there are pulsars that I, I, don't, I don't even remember what year it was, but when they first discovered one, they thought that, you know, people from other planets were trying to contact us because there was this, this beam of light and this energy coming from it, and it was circulating every... 1.8 seconds, I forget, something, you know. But whatever it was, it was, it was like, here's this, this beam of light. And you could literally see it, and it was like clockwork. And they said, this is a message from aliens, you know. And so <laughs> until they found out that it was a pulsar, and then it shoots out this beam of light. And then... And then, you know, of course, then there's the power and the sound that, you know, if you put a microphone out there, I mean, you can just hear the incredible power and everything. <clears throat> and, you know, uh, uh, a magnetar, the, the amount of power that's going out of that thing, <clears throat> it's about when it, you know, just first shoots out, in one-tenth of a second, I mean, one-tenth of a second, it puts out as much energy as our sun in 10,000 years. Okay, so we're talking power. That's what needs to be understood. We're talking power. And uh, the same goes for um, the light of it. Um, some of them shoot out gamma rays, short and long gamma rays. Uh, the gamma ray burst is just an incredible burst of energy. If it's focused like a, a long gamma ray, it's just, you know, there's nothing more powerful and there's nothing brighter than that in, in that focused thing. So that is several different suns going supernova. Okay? That is several different suns dying and having a different effect in their death. Some bring forth more power in the universe. Some bring forth more light. But what we're going to discover is, while we may have thought that was what it was all about, you will never comprehend how massive and how glorious a black hole is in the plan of God. And that it is far outreaches all these other suns in scope. Okay? All right. So supernova, what is it? It's the death of, of a large sun. Um, it's, I mentioned this in our last class, I think. It is, um, we can say it's the death of a son. It's all in how you look at it. It is also could be seen as a huge release of energy going out that will be the material by which other sons will be made, second generation sons and planets and whatever else. Right. And, uh, <clears throat> but, uh, it's, it's just a huge amount of energy in its dying that is released. And 
we think of explosions like on Earth or, um, you know, on planets or stuff like that. Explosions, as we understand it, are destructive. They destroy. But when suns explode, when suns die, they release materials for the life of other suns. It's not destructive at all. It's destructive to the sun that dies. But ultimately, life is brought forth in other. And isn't that what, even, we didn't even finish reading those scriptures in 2 Corinthians 4, but isn't that what Paul said? Now death works in me, but life in you. See? All right, so the actual process is <coughs> of when a, a sun goes supernova is, you know, first of all, it just collapses in on itself. Okay, it collapses in on itself, and then it explodes outwardly. And the outer crust of that that was built up and all that, all of those materials are blown out into the universe. Not the inner core, but all of the outer material. In fact, I wrote something down. It uh, explodes ejecting its outer shell. That's, that's the way I saw it. Outer shell. Yeah. That it's... Uh, Understand what but that's that's us, that's our well if it one and one is how much? You know, <coughs> but <laughs> meaning of that into the universe and as many as receive him, it's almost like receiving that material into yourself, 
that material is Christ. It is himself. It is the imparting of himself. And that becomes your sonship when you start trading. But this son gives its own material to make one new man, or you could say to make many sons. To him, it's not about just light. And what you'll see when we get into black holes, which is the largest death of a son or sons, it gives off light and power. But it's not about light and power. That's not what it's about at all. It has a greater purpose than that. <clears throat> all right. So uh, turn with me to Luke chapter 9. I'll skip a few things here that I was going to share so I can get done with this. Luke 9, 23 through 26. This is Jesus speaking. And he said to them all, okay, so uh, people always say, well, those words aren't to us. You know, that was to them, or that was to only people who were going to become disciples, not to us. And he said to them all, okay, now what does all include? All, thank you. <laughs> and he said to them all, if any man, and trust me, that word is, is not even in the Greek. It's if any, in case you're trying to say, well, this is only for men. <laughs> Mankind man. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever would save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man profited if he gain the whole world and lose himself or, or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he, when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. All right. So let me just read a little bit here since my time is rushing madly away. Jesus made it clear that true followers would first, from the onset, deny themselves. To deny ourselves must involve a denial of our own view of things, which, in other words, is to deny our mind and thoughts on things. Okay. If you, he's, when Jesus said deny yourself, he's, he didn't say deny yourself of things. No, you can't have that ice cream. I mean, that's the way we think. Huh? Well, that means I can't, I can't have this, I can't do that. You know, it's way, it's cutting it way thinner than that. He said deny yourself. He didn't say deny yourself of things. Oh, you can't drink that. He said deny yourself. If you're dead, then you need to deny yourself. Why? Because you're dead with Christ. Okay? And so I said it's a denial of our own view of things, which in other words is to deny our mind and thoughts on things. I'm sure that we all think we've done this. I'm still doing it. I have, I am constantly <coughs> confronted with religious thoughts that I thought I didn't ever have any. Well, this is the way it is. 
No, that's the way you were taught. That's the way you thought. That's the way whatever, but it's not his mind. You know. And I don't know that we're always in a state that we, like, they surely must have been to some degree when Jesus said, okay, look, if you're going to follow me, you've got to deny yourself. So this means you need to be prepared when stuff comes up that's contrary to the way you think. Did not, the, did not the scripture say his ways are not our ways? Do you agree with that? Did it say his thoughts are not our thoughts? Okay. So then you go, now we say and we make that statement again. Is that the Bible? Is that what the word of God says? Is that what following Jesus is? That doesn't scare, you know, that doesn't scare me to go after the Lord with all my heart. It used to. Because I didn't know what it meant. But it doesn't scare me now. Because I, you know, first of all, I know that it is going to cost me everything. So he didn't say, salvation is a free gift. You know that, don't you? You can't earn salvation. It's a free gift. But if you're going to follow Jesus, that's going to cost you. Okay. So, um... And then I wrote, but the mind is not the only part of us that must be denied. Our will must be taken into consideration. The will involves denial of things such as our choices, desires, preferences uh, that would come into conflict with the direction Jesus would take. Well, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to sleep on the floor, you know. I don't want, you know, can you imagine the place? I mean, just some of the places I've been, and I've been... Me and Doug Fisher and others, we have been in ungodly, horrible, vermin-infested, just horrible things. And we, and you know, if God sent us there, we're thankful for anything we got. But I can tell you stories that, you know, for some of you, just freak you out. You know, a germaphobe wouldn't make it. You can't be a germaphobe and follow Jesus where He sends you. Can I get amen? Oh, yeah, that's right. You, because you're, th- then you're putting that and that, you know, you're putting that in front of what Jesus was saying. Well, I can't, I won't do it. I can't, I won't. Hey, blah, 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 blah. You know? But then when we stand in church and there's the warm feeling or the air conditioner or whatever, we go, I'll follow you anywhere, liar. What would you do if every time you said that in the warmth of a service like that and God said, liar? You know, what would you do? You go, no, I really would. You're just like Peter. He said he wouldn't do it. No, I would. No, you won't. Until you take up the cross and deny yourself. Not just deny yourself of fun things that you want. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm just going to end with this because I know my time's getting away here. <clears throat> I believe in freedom of religion. Did you know that? I actually do. I believe in freedom of speech. That means I believe in letting people say whatever they want to about me, and I don't get upset. I say, oh, yeah. We're all born in America. Praise God. Everybody's got the right to say anything they want. Well, most of us go, they don't have the right. How dare they? Are you an American? Yeah. You believe in freedom of speech? Yeah. Not that. You see, I'm telling you, there's a lot of self in a lot of the things that we think are so righteous, you know. And I believe in freedom of religion. And if if somebody came here and they said, I don't want to go all the way. I don't want to deny myself. I don't want to deny my will. I don't, I want this. I I don't want that. I, you know, you know what I say to that? Does anybody know what I say to that? (laughs) Yeah, thanks for being honest. And dude, you need to get out of here as fast as you can because we do but we don't put it on you. This is what we want. We actually want that. <laughs> so, you know, you know, this is a cult. It's trying to make me do something I don't want to do. Well, first of all, did you join this place? Did we drag you into this place? You know what I mean? Did we chain you up while you were here? No. If you caught wind of it, what you should have caught wind of is not that it's a cult, but I don't 
believe the same way. I believe in freedom of religion. Do you, Randy? And I would say, yes, go find your place. And I've said it a million times. But I also believe in freedom of religion for me. Follow me? That if I want to go all the way with Jesus, why are you persecuting me? And if we want to, and we mean it with all of our hearts, and we just love Jesus, why are you persecuting us? Why? We just are loving on Jesus. We're not going, we're not all sitting around going, eh, I hate this place, you know? And anybody that, that is, is what? Eventually leaves. And, but see, I always have to do this every so often because I want to encourage people to leave. I'm the only pastor in the whole of United States that encourages people to leave. I remember coming in one Sunday after traveling for months, and the place was just a bunch of people everywhere. And Jim said something like, well, I don't know what happened, but while you were gone, everything, I said, don't worry, I'll preach this morning and I'll thin it out. <laughs> but <coughs> it's, you know, to, to us, it is just simply being in love with Jesus and wanting to go with all of our heart and just, you know, and not, not wanting to put that on people that aren't in the same place. But if there are other people, and there are, guess what? There are, there's still more. They're still coming, and there's still some you don't know about. There's still several you don't know about, and they want to be here because they want this Jesus, this Lamb Jesus, this supernova Jesus, this one who, who, who selflessly gives. And I say before the Father and before the, his angels and before the Son and the Holy Spirit, then bring them in, Father. Bring them in and let them be fed. And let them find joy in a place that they couldn't find maybe in many other states or whatever. Let them come and let them bask in this reality because here it flows like not water, like milk and honey. It is a land of milk and honey. All right, let's take our break, and I'm sure I ran over and...